Okay, it's way past my bedtime here in the UK. It's after midnight, but I had to stay up, stick with this game between Hans Niemann and Jeffrey Jong. So Hans came storming out of the blocks here, engine level precision, but then let's see what happened. So we had E4 from Hans, E6 from Jeffrey, the French defense, D4, D5 on the board, and now Knight C3 from Hans, so he invites the winner variation, very sharp if Jeffrey wants to go for it, but he goes for the classical variation with knight to f6, Hans takes the space, kicks the knight back, and we now get this classic pawn structure with pawn to f4 and c5 from black breaking at the center. So the knight develops to f3, covers that pawn some more, knight c6 adds pressure, bishop e3 defends, takes on d4 was played, knight recaptures, all standard theory, and now the queen comes to b6, again seen many times, pressures down here, and also pressures this pawn, and a3 is a sneaky way to defend it, because now if the queen captures on b2, knight a4 is the move, and when you went a3, you stop the queen from retreating to that square. And the queen's actually trapped here, the minor pieces, they work together, trap the queen. So the pawn is immune. Instead, we had the bishop developing. Now we had knight b5. So a very tricky variation, and it works well for Neiman out of the opening here. Now, if you go a6 right now to kick this knight, then there's pawn to b4. This is the whole tricky line. And if captures here, this is the best move. Then you take on c5, queen recaptures, and queen d3 is an important move to protect this bishop. Then this is the top line, bishop recaptures, queen goes, and you can recoup your pawn with advantage. So that's what would have happened if a6, but we didn't have that one. Instead, we had this knight taking on d4, the bishop recaptured, and now castles from black. You don't want to get hit with this knight d6 check stuff. So the king tucks away to safety. Now we had captures on c5, very logical to weaken this d6 square, but you don't jump in immediately. This would be a mistake. Then black can go knight to e4, challenging this knight, takes his forced, pawn recaptures, and this is a good position for black. The rooks come into the d file very quickly. The king's not yet castled, advantage black. So that's why we didn't have knight d6, but queen d4. Now if you go knight to e4, it's different. We chop the queens off, this is better for white. So f6 was played instead, probing at the center, very standard break in the French. We had this bishop developing, pawn captures here, pawn recaptures, so black gets some play down the f file here, and now bishop to d7 was calmly played here by Jeffrey, kicks the knight into d6, and here he goes a bit wrong. Now, bishop c6 would seem to be the best move. It is a bit passive, so I can understand why he didn't go for this one. Instead, the bishop comes to a4 here, so probing against this pawn, b3 was played. The bishop now goes back to e8 here. Looks very passive in that position too, but there could be some ideas to bounce around here in future and activate like that, come outside the pawn chain. So Hans goes b4, he plays actively. The knight comes into e4, he now chops these queens, ruins the pawn structure, he takes here on e4, you can't start chopping on b7 there by the way with the knight, this knight on e4 is too powerful, the pawn recaptures and now bishop c4. So it's advantage to Hans, he's really executed these top engine moves, very very precise opening preparation from him, black's landed with these doubled pawns here on the e and b file and white's got the pressure. So good position for hands out of the opening. And now Jeffrey just sacks a pawn here. So he could have defended like this, for example, but then okay, white could castle. You've got pressure coming down the F file already. Plus the rook could potentially pick up this pawn in the future. This is the problem with the black pawn structure. So instead we had this move of king to h8, chucks the pawn on e6, which hands captures, and then the bishop bounced back to a4, hits this pawn and prepares to activate the rooks. So castles queenside, now played by hands, great move. And now we had e3 from Jeffrey, so he wants to run this down to e2 potentially. Now just to show you the problem, if he brings the rook across here, attacks bishop and then pawn, well this is the response from white. You can ignore the attack on the bishop, 
because then you checkmate on the back rank. And if you take here first, rook recaptures, you still can't take same problems. So it's a better position for white if black attacks the bishop immediately. So instead, e3 was played and it anticipates this rook to f1 move. e2 could be in the air, but hands goes rook to f1 anyway. Because now if e2 comes, well, once again, we're chopping with check. This is key. Then the rook takes king e1, uh, rook e1 rather, and king d2 coming to round up this pawn. This is big problems for black, big advantage to white. So g6 was played, gives the king some room, and now hands goes wrong here. He's played very precisely up to this point, but here he should find the powerful centralizing move of first taking on f8, rook recaptures, and then bishop d5. This is the centralizing move. You hold here, you hit this pawn, and now if black goes rook to e8, best move, picking up this pawn, well you can pick up here, Yes, black takes this one, but you're still a pawn ahead in this position. Good chances to push for a win because you've got the three on one on the queen side. That could get very dangerous. And this one's not going anywhere too fast. The king can always step to d2 if the pawn overextends. So good winning chances there for white. But we didn't have takes on f8. Hands went bishop g4. He got spooked by the e2 move, and so he covers that square. But it just gives Jeffrey time now to get coordinated again. So he hits the pawn on e5, hands goes rook d4, captures here. The bishop dropped back to e2, and after king g7, g3, bishop c6, things are now very level, equal pawns here, equal material, not so easy for either side to make inroads. So the king came to b2. Pawn b5 now, good move. Clamps on a4 and c4, makes it difficult to get that majority going. The rook came back to d3, and now we see lots of shuffling from both players here. If you actually look at the clock times, they're exceptionally low on time. So they're just trying to get to time control here, which is move 40. A bunch of shuffly moves, nothing changing too much in the position here. We get to this position, move 39, and then this is move 40 bishop back to c6. And this is really the way the game heads now. So Jeffrey's just kind of bouncing this position back across here. Hans shuffles a different rook move, so he doesn't force the draw immediately. But now in this position, the bishop comes back, rook to f1, threefold repetition, and they made a draw. Now I was looking out for the interview, of course, but I couldn't actually see that an interview was given. So unless I missed it on the stream there, we didn't hear from Hans Niemann today, Always interesting to hear what he has to say. So many eyes on him right now. Now, there was another exceptional game of the day today, which I'm sure you can catch on another channel. I won't say who it was or spoil the result in case you want to check that one out without knowing the result. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see another amazing Hans Niemann game, then see the video on screen. Do hit that subscribe button to never miss a future video. And thanks very much for watching. See you soon.